Evansville is a city with great history and heritage. For the past few decades, we've seen some of the most beautiful and historic buildings abandoned and destroyed. Many of these buildings have been torn down for progress. But all too often, the site becomes a parking lot or is left as an empty space. Others have been the victim of neglect and short-sightedness. The soundness of the construction compromised by the elements and abandonment and their potential for adaptive reuse ignored. One of the greatest examples of loss in Evansville was the destruction of the l and train depot. Even decades after its destruction, many in Evansville lament its loss. Built in 1902, the Louisville and Nashville Station was designed as a passenger train depot on the corner of Ohio Street and Fulton Avenue. Richard Monfront designed the building in a Richardsonian Romanesque style. The main building was made up of three parts, a three-story center section with two-story sections on each side, and a one-story baggage area located on the rear corner along Ohio Street. The building was constructed of rough-faced limestone. The main floor contained large, round arched windows with elaborate stained glass designs in the upper part. These allowed abundant natural light for the three waiting areas. These round arched windows were framed by smooth limestone and at the base of each arch were intricately carved stones with floral designs, basket weave patterns, and human faces. These faces are one of the most remembered features of the building and the most valuable artifacts at the auction held shortly after its destruction. And the L&N Depot is a great example of Romanesque Revival architecture uh, built in 1902 and it's really a shame that we lost it even today when you talk to people around Evansville uh, they will always uh, lament the fact that we didn't we didn't save that building. Originally there was a large limestone canopy over the main entrance and one story cast iron canopies over the entrances on either side. By the time the building was destroyed these stunning pieces had been removed when Fulton Avenue was widened. The upper floor of the building contained pairs of round arched windows Engraved in the center of the building were carved limestones which held the inscription L and N. The interior of the building resembled many other train depots. Distinctive features of the Evansville station included the semicircular, round arched stained glass windows, a coffered ceiling in the waiting room, arched openings with elaborately molded plaster, and some rather intricate woodwork. The main entrance, facing Fulton Avenue, led travelers into a general waiting room where they could either purchase their tickets at the ticket office in the right-hand corner of the room or walk right out into the loading platforms to catch their train. Some passengers that had the time to spare could sit along the long benches in the center of the general waiting room. Off to the right side at the end of a small hallway was the location of the ladies' waiting room, intended for the wives and children. The dining area was located on the far left portion of the building opposite of the ladies' waiting room. This area contained a kitchen, a lunchroom, and a dining room. Once the train had arrived and successfully backed up next to the loading platforms, passengers would exit off the trains and head toward either the baggage room or the express rooms off to the right. In addition to the baggage and express rooms, there were smaller rooms for the train workers. The second floor was the location of 13 different offices, including the largest office on the north end of the building that contained the division accountant. At the end of the sitting stairs on the third floor, there was another office area. This housed the record room and offices for the train master, signal supervisor, assistant engineer, and the dispatchers. With the growth of the automobile and the development of the improved highway system and a growing airline industry, the popularity of train travel declined significantly after World War II. It had all sorts of memories built into it uh, from, from Evansville's past. All these uh, you know, uh, soldiers and sailors who came home from wars came to the train station there on Fulton Avenue. People who, uh, who came back from their first trip to Chicago or from Indianapolis uh, come here to this train station. So there were, there were generations of people who had memories uh, the, of that station because it, refl re it represented um, visits to the wider world and then a return to home. In 1952, 
34 passenger and 56 freight trains were arriving daily in Evansville. By 1970, the average number of trains had decreased by 20%. At 9.39 p.m. on April 30, 1971, the arrival and later departure of the Atlanta-bound Georgian marked the end to passenger services in Evansville. For the next several years, L&N continued to use the depot for offices. In 1974, L&N left the building and sold the property to Evansville Material. With the departure of the L&N, the future of the train depot was in question. From 1974 to 1985, there would be much discussion about the possible usage of the old building, including proposed renovation to be used as new headquarters for Metropolitan Evansville Transit Bus Station. There was much debate over the uses of the vacant building. However, with its current situation, it was not long before the building would befall its horrendous fate. In the time period while the building stood empty, many of them were worried about its future. In 1974, when Evansville Materials purchased the property, company president Arnold Moser stated that he just wanted the land and it happened to have an old rail depot on it. Through the years, many different ideas for adaptive reuses were proposed. Proposals for the building range from using it as a retail and restaurant space to developing a youth center to housing the Mets bus system. All along, Evanston Material toyed with the possibility that the building would be raised, but they were willing to listen to proposals. It was only at the end, in late February 1985, when the city of Evansville was negotiating to buy the building and needed the land to convert the structure to the home for the new Mets system. The Evansville Materials deserted negotiations and started the demolition of the building. On February 27, 1985, a small crowd had assembled to watch the beginning of the end for the Ellen Station. It was at 10 a.m. when bystanders stood by, absorbing the dust as they saw pieces of wood and chunks of remarkable limestone come crashing down. During the first few days of demolition, crowds gathered and watched as a wrecking ball whittled away at the building. As the Grand Old Depot was transformed into a huge pile of broken limestone, splintered wood, and blowing papers left behind from ten years earlier, the crowds dwindled. By the end of the third week of March, the depot had stood for eighty years as the front gate of Evansville, where it was reduced to a freshly graded empty lot. Only the original stoop remained. During the demolition process, those witnesses began sorting around in the piles of rubble stone and shards of metal, looking for some intricately carved limestone or salvaging for some sufficient piece to remember the grandeur of the old Ellen Inn. There was an auction later held on March 17, 1985, bidding on the 19 pieces with designs of faces on them and 25 to 30 oddball rocks of stone that were saved from the obliteration. Overall, more than 100 people turned out for the auction. With everyone's efforts and the preservation community exhausted, in the end, it was useless for the old Ellen Inn Depot with the loss of one of Evansville's greatest historic treasures, the preservationists began a process of saving other landmarks with many successes, including the Rosenberger Building and other structures in Evansville that hold historic value and are still being threatened, including the old Greyhound bus station. It is our duty, as citizens and historians, to make sure no antique landmark ever shares the same fate as that of the Ellen and Train Depot.